So welcome. We're going to talk all about how to crack the coding interview with no experience today. You know, some people think it's just as easy, like people are up here just slapping the keyboard, making magic happen, and you can crack. And that's how people pass coding interviews all the time. But really, that's, that's not how you ideally want to crack it because that's not exactly how it happens. And so what we want to do in this video is we want to help you cover passing and cracking the coding interview from a technical perspective of what you need to do. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Jason Humphrey. I help aspiring developers get into the career of their choice, technology, and get that first high paying job. And I want to talk to you today all about cracking your coding interview. And if you want more about this, make sure you hit the thumbs up if you would right now. Hit, uh, if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. But I'd really love a thumbs up. That really helps uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, all these platforms share the message to help someone else out. Now, what's interesting about when we talk about cracking the code interview is you probably have a fundamental belief that you have to be really good at data structures and algorithms. And that is not always the case. Now, I'm going to do a video on Fang here in the future. And in that case, you got to be fantastic at data structures and algorithms. But don't get me wrong, while that's important, it's not the end all be all because a majority of all companies are not looking for this. What they're looking for is someone that can solve their problems, have the right process in place, and ultimately drive value to the team and to their customers. So the real question is, can we do that? And can we show that in a technical manner, which normally comes back to problem solving and how you think through processes. So I wanna dive into this today. If you already saw the outline of the session, I'm talking today about cracking a code interview through four main avenues we're gonna go through. Your research, how you practice, how you code, and what do you do with failure? When we think about this first part and we think about research, there is two main things I want you to research right now. And the first is, if you wanna crack that code in an interview, Glassdoor is a great place to start. And I know this is this first part is really not coding, but it's so such has such a profound effect if you can understand the types of problems that these people ask. I'll tell you this: when I give out coding interviews, what I've statistically seen is, on average, if I'm doing a couple, oh, around fifty to a hundred. I was going to say a couple hundred, but anywhere from fifty to a hundred interviews in the course of a month, I can anticipate in the next six weeks the coding problem I've been asking lately will show up on Glassdoor. It always makes its way there, and it always baffles me on how it's so consistent, and yet it's unique, and it's it happens all the time. So start with research. The second thing you have to research is this, is parsing their job descriptions to research the hard skills and soft skills out of it. You all know if you heard me before, I love always parsing the hard skills and soft skills to figure out how the audience is selling to us so we can sell back to them. But when we're thinking about how to crack the coding interview, if you know the hard skills they want most, then I want you to go research the styles and standards that are most commonly used with the hard skills that they talk about the most or they value the most. So if we're talking about you're focused on a JavaScript job, right? What are the styles and standards people do a lot of time in Node? At the same time, since it's JavaScript, are they using the Airbnb style guide? What type of styles and standards are they potentially following? And what ones do you follow so that when you're in the moment, you can talk directly to this? And at the same time, dual purpose, you can really study the pros and cons of most of those hard skills. And it, it's a really phenomenal way to also prepare from a soft skill slash behavioral perspective. Uh, and then lastly, uh, one of the things that ends up happening to talk about and where research after parts and job descriptions is the soft skills. Your soft skills are going to show up pretty consistently in all interviews because they're gonna ask you about a time on a project or they're gonna ask you about an experience you had and being able to talk about how you communicated and what you did through your soft skills is gonna be pretty important. Even while you're trying to code in the coding interview, it's a very important skill to sell yourself and to crack that coding interview. Now this is the research. You do good research through Glassdoor through the job description. You're gonna find that you can find a lot of information and tidbits going into the interview. One last thing in research here I actually wanna add 
you can't forget to research the person who's interviewing you. And if you get to know who it is ahead of time, make sure you're looking up their GitHub, make sure you're looking at their blogs, make sure you're looking at what they do publicly on LinkedIn. You can generally learn something about somebody to bring in, to utilize in your favor, to show them you do your research and you take this seriously. Now let's move on to practice. You wanna, you wanna crack this code in an interview? I bet you do, but you can't crack it until you practice. So there's three things I wanna point out. I won't spend long in this section because I know the juicy stuff, we're getting closer to it, but I'll save, I'll get through this part quick. First, practice, mock interviews. Ask your peers whether you're coming out of a boot camp, you know somebody in the industry, you got a family member, ask someone to give you some mock interviews. There's also other services like Pramp and uh, what was the other one? that give out, or not give out, but we'll do mock interviews for a, for a fee. The other way is code signal. Code signal is a really good way to crack the code interview. If you go take a practice test, if you're in a level eight, nine, or 10, you're ready for interviews. If you're below that, one of the best ways to get that level up is the code signal arcade core section. If you do that, they've gamified it, they make it really fun. And next is to practice the top interview questions. Leak code really makes it easy. As much as I don't always like leak code for everything that's needed, if you're in a spot where you need to practice top interview questions or you need more to practice, this is a really good thing to practice because there's a reason why it's the most common questions. So that's practice. Now let's focus on code. This is something that's extremely important, right? That's why we're here today. How do I crack the coding interview? And I want to tell you the number one way that you can crack the coding interview, right? Practicing is great. Having the research done is great. But when you're in the moment, what do you do, right? Do you falter under pressure? Do you articulate yourself? Do you ask the right questions? Like, how are you approaching this and what it actually happens live in person? And so I want to give you a simple process to where if we're talking about you're going to go crack the coding interview, you can practice it with this too, by the way. This coding process is what will get you through to help you crack it. And that is, first and foremost, you must seek to understand the problem. You do not move forward until you understand. If you have to ask questions, that's fine. But you stop right there until you understand everything that the problem's asking. If you saw the recent live stream I was doing with Kyle Simpson, he pointed this out as well, even for himself and his uh in his own words and how, you know, he, he's a senior engine, principal engineer. He's hell. He's above principal engineer. He's a damn good JavaScript engineer and one of the top in the industry. And even he said, that's the number one thing that he would recommend to people that he has to constantly do himself is make sure he stops everything until he understands the problem. So when we think about your coding process, that's first seek to understand. Once I understand, here's the second part of the process. You pseudo code. You don't go try to write code right away you take your time to sit down and write down in plain English in comments exactly everything you're gonna do and list out the logic and the functionality you want to have and how you're going to approach it. And then you stop for the third step. And the third step, you review what you just wrote. And as you're reviewing it, you try to make sure, okay, have I fully understood the problem and does this solve the problem in the most effective way I know how? Okay. If that's the case, then great. First three steps are done. Move on to code, which is our fourth step. But there is one thing I want to point out. You're probably noticing because there's only five steps here that I want you to follow to crack code interview. What you're probably noticing is like, Jason, come on. You want me to crack code interview, but only 20% of what you're telling me to do is coding. Yeah, that's right. If you actually look at the job, whenever you get the job someday, you're going to look back and realize that you're not actually coding more than like you're not physically actually getting code on the keyboard more than generally 20 to 40% of your coding career. And that's because of meetings, testing, documentation, deployments, a whole bunch of other things that show up and the interviews are just the same. If you're not doing all the steps needed to be successful, it's gonna slow you down. Now, when I think about the coding section, remember this is the fourth step. If you wanna crack the code interview, there's two ways I think about code. There is coding your fundamentals, the variables, coding the functions, and uh, the kind of the baseline of the app and the architecture of what you want. 
you focus on that first and you make sure that runs according to plan, right? The function calls itself. You maybe try a console log. You start with the very, very basics. And then the second part of the coding step is you focus on what I call loop and logic. You focus on all of your main, your if statements, your logic, uh, your loops, because a majority of the time where people screw it up is they don't realize the exact problem they're solving. And if they don't understand that, but they need to jump right into code, they generally start throwing some for loops down. They don't maybe understand their data. Then they do an if statement or two. And now they're in the middle of their code going, ah, why, why does this not work? When really, if they were to stop for just two seconds and realize, oh, the data is not there like I think it is. And I wired it up wrong. And I actually don't solve the problem because I don't actually got to wire it up this way. I got to do something different. This is where I want you to make sure you understand what you're doing first. You fully understand it. Then you pseudocode it and you review it to see if it makes sense. And now you code first and foremost for the basics, your functions, your variables, and then you code for your loops and your logic. And then lastly, once you believe you've got it working to the correct specification, you refactor what you have to the best of your abilities. Now in this video, I'm not trying to go super in depth in each spot of the process, but I'm trying to allude to you to show you what you need to do to be successful in the coding process. Now, I wanna talk about one last thing before I make this video too damn long. Failure, what happens when you fail? Because if you wanna crack a coding interview, I hate to say it, but you gotta hear it. Failure is a piece of the puzzle you can't overlook. You are going to have to fail. For many years now, I've watched people have to fail up to 15, on average around 15 to 25 interviews to get the job they want. Now, yeah, there's different aspects to how it happens to people. So like if they have been in the job a couple of years, things change at the same time. If they just are born natural, things can change. But on average, 15 to 25. What that tells me to tell you is, you got to run towards failure, but but not just, oh, I failed, move on to the next one. No, when you fail, there's two things I want you to do. One, I want you to track every question you ever get in a question bank. Because throughout these interviews, people will run out of questions to ask you. Because what you'll find is the logic and the kind of the problem behind it or the solution behind it, they're generally similar there's generally only five or six types of patterns of answers you'll give in code interviews. I guess that's the real secret to cracking the code interview is the failures because you'll notice the patterns. And if you keep track of this question bank, what do you study the next time? Your question bank and people will eventually run out of questions to ask you. And the second thing you do after a failure is you do a retrospective and you figure out, and I'll just give you this as a barrier minimum, what you did bad, what you did good, and what you can specifically do next time to improve even just a little bit. You do this and you will start to learn what it takes to crack the code in an interview. There is no short, quick, easy, quick fix solution here. What you have to learn how to do is have the process of what it takes to research to make sure you go in well prepared. You then have to make sure you're practicing along the way. And when you get into the code in interview, You've got to make sure you're following a coding process. And it's not to say today you have to take my process of understanding, pseudocode, reviewing, coding, refactoring. No, you don't have to follow my process, but you have to have a process. Because when shit hits the fan and things get tough, you're going to need this. And lastly, what do you do in failure? You do these four things and you do them consistently. You put this process in place to be successful. You will find that you will learn how to crack the coding interviews. And this is what it's all about. I know that people think sometimes that cracking the code interview means you go study that, that book of cracking the code interview and magic happens. And I take one quick course and I'm done. And no, that's, that's not it. It's this process that I'm showing you. So know your value, know your process, know you're going to prepare and know what to do in light of failure because you need it. You need the failure to be successful. That's gonna do it for us today. If you like this content, make sure you thumbs up, hit the subscribe notification bell. I really appreciate if you do that right now and have a great rest of your day.